five Carbon Street. It result that was an explosion, kids screaming, getting multiple calls of fire from residents and the building has collapsed. Chaos on Carbon Street in Syracuse. But there definitely was a collapse of the building. There was a, a car that was uh, underneath the collapsed portion of the home. Uh, there were multiple victims uh, spread out in front of the building on the sides of the building. Fire, police, ambulance and more rushing to the scene. The city's mayor with this message. I think as a community, we all need to pray for the victims and uh, again, grateful for their first responders. Straight ahead, team coverage on the rescue and recovery efforts as investigators work to figure out what happened. Good evening, everyone. I'm Christy Casciano. I'm Jeff Kulikowski. Syracuse firefighters still on the scene working as we speak, but saying just moments ago, confident tonight that no one else was inside that house that collapsed on Syracuse's north side, injuring 11 people. With a search for victims close to over, the search for the cause of the explosion and total collapse just getting underway. News Channel 9's Jeremy Skiba has been talking to neighbors about what they saw and heard. And News Channel 9's Andrew Donovan with the very latest on the rescue and investigation. Andrew, uh, I know you just listened to uh, Chief Mons and the mayor give an update just a short time ago. Bring us up to speed about some of those new details you've learned. Well, Jeff, we can now confirm that 11 people were sent to the hospital as part of the initial response. 10 people taken by ambulance here, and then an 11th person that was then accounted for at the hospital. At least two of those people are in serious condition, but the fire chief says that he's confident in the care they're receiving at Upstate Hospital, which specializes in severe burns, and that there's a chance they will recover as they continue to work on their own health progress tonight. We're also able to confirm that no other people have been found inside the rubble after several searches by both firefighters and specially trained dogs. This is what the scene looked like tonight as firefighters waited and worked every single minute, every single hour with this high temperature still. This is what it looked like earlier when that collapsed building just, just still shocked people of, of how much the damage was and, and just what was up against firefighters. If, uh, if we want to come back to me live, this is the best look we've had tonight of the actual damage. We will zoom in and see some firefighters still in the front, still some in the back, but you can see what was a house there just collapsed. The, 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 one of the firefighters said the, the, the top floor is where the ground floor should be and the ground floor is on top of the ground. Um, and, and that's what was up against firefighters. Not an easy job for them to have to support it just enough to get in, do their, their sweeps through as, as trained firefighters, and then get dogs in to help them become confident that no one else was inside. The good news tonight, there is no one else inside. But this was a big job for firefighters, and I had the fire chief just a few minutes ago explain how big of a deal this was for his team. Certainly, I've uh, been to several collapses in my career. Um, never uh, with the amount of people that were trapped inside or hurt um, because of the collapse or of an explosion. So, never seen anything like this before, and not many people have with this many people that are trapped. Yes, it's certainly we're in a good spot right now um, after conducting our searches. Uh, when you look at the condition of the building, uh, to know that there were 13 people inside that have made it out is remarkable. I think the mayor and I spoke about how miraculous it is to have uh, all 13 alive right now at this point. So this scene will be established through the night. Fire and police will stay here on the scene to protect it as evidence, but also wrap up the very tail end of the search. At least two dog sweeps have found nobody, which is great news, but there will be a third search from a different dog being driven to the scene as we speak. Now, Mayor Walsh does have some no information about who lived here. He says it was a family of six being visited by a family of seven. Hence the number of people inside, hence the number of people that were ultimately hurt, and hence why they've spent so long searching just to make sure there's no one else inside. The mayor also says the governor called him to check in on the situation. I know there's state fire resources being used here tonight. And we also don't know a lot about the investigation. Police and fire haven't yet gone as far as saying what caused this. Was that car that people claim they saw the catalyst for the gas leak, for the explosion? 
That information is just being sorted out as we speak. Once this rescue is totally clear, then police can get in there with detectives to begin the investigation. One of the first reporters on the scene earlier today, around 4 o'clock when this happened, is News Channel 9's Jeremy Skiba. He's just down the road from me talking with neighbors about what they heard even before firefighters got here. Yeah, Andrew, thank you. Yes, News Channel 9 arrived on scene 20 minutes after the call went out. When we arrived, we saw dozens and dozens of neighbors up and down the street here wondering what was happening. Charlie Zuck was home watching TV when a large bang shook his house. He went rushing out to a cloud of smoke. His neighbor's home was gone. Zuck and his neighbors hurried to the huge pile of rubble, moving debris, desperately searching for signs of anyone who might be trapped. EMS quickly arriving, and Zuck was told to leave. I was just hoping that nobody was inside, and obviously there were. Zuck was unable to share much about his neighbors, but he was especially worried for the children who lived in the home. I know a little of them a little bit because I know the gentleman that owns the house, a great guy, um, and then he rented the house. Zuck also told me that the people that lived in the house next to his were quiet and the ideal neighbors that anyone would want. Live on Carbon Street, Jeremy Skiba, News Channel 9. Jeremy, Andrew, thank you very much for that updated coverage. And for more updates on this story, make sure you are checking back to localsyr.com. And then for any overnight developments, because again, people are still on the scene there, make sure you're watching the morning news beginning at 4.30 right here on News Channel 9. We'll have live coverage for you from the scene.